Hello and welcome back. We have a bonus video. Let's start it. Brandon Sanderson is your god. He's the biggest fantasy writer. He is also very Mormon and those things are profoundly related. Was a hit piece written in Wired.com of all places. Wired is an absolutely atrocious website that is more clickbait than actual articles. This article not only kind of tears him, Brandon Sanderson down per personally, he calls his readers boring, his write him boring and uninteresting. He also basically says that he's not being truthful in his approach. And it's such a bizarre article to read. And I'm not going to go too much into it just because I don't want to give the guy that wrote it any more airtime because obviously jealousy. But I'm going to point out attacking someone because of their religious beliefs is not on in any way, shape or form. Even if you profoundly disagree with them. The overall tone of the article is dismissive. It is insulting. It is somewhat crass in places. And ultimately lacks understanding of fantasy and fiction in a sense. Sanderson responded to the article on his Reddit. And I'm going to give that, I'm going to read that out to you as well. But it was interesting. The jealousy of Sanderson is quite real. And you see it a lot on the internet, especially on the sinkhole of depravity that is Twitter. The well, depravity, more like Tumblr in 2012. The whole thing is, he writes good books. And it took me a long time to appreciate his work. It took me a long time to understand his work. I didn't... I couldn't read it for a long time. I tried. And then the books hit the right note back in 2020, 2019. So we're going back a few years now. And I have to say, I fell in love with his work. I fell in love with his storytelling, his world building, his characters. And I'm so glad that I did. And I feel kind of bad for not reading his book sooner. I've had the great pleasure of meeting Sanderson as well at a talk. Long before I'd actually read his work, it was just I was invited to this thing and I got to meet him, which is very cool. And his writing stuff on YouTube, his podcast, all of this stuff is fantastic and definitely worth watching slash listening to if you want to be a writer yourself. He has proven to be no, de no end of help for me. Now... Watching the jealousy rise out of the Twitter depths over the Kickstarter, I think, kind of... Because he's always put in that air quotes problematic category, and I dislike the phrase problematic. So, the guy's a Mormon, who cares? Like, spend your money where you want, but please don't make virtue signaling Twitter posts and booktube videos about you donating or selling your books. Because no one cares. You're just doing it to make yourself look good, and let's be honest. And if you are a low-tier writer who is struggling to sell books, and all you write is propaganda pieces, that's your own problem. Let's be real. A lot of these books that these people produce are scraps of paper that no one's going to remember in a hundred years' time. Where Sanderson... Sanderson created something timeless that will be remembered in hundreds of years' time as great works of fantasy where many of these more jealous, low-tier writers never will be. And he works tirelessly with the fans and created a fan-inclusive space. So, let's look at his replies. Now, I'm going to paraphrase some of it, and I'm not going to read out everything, but I'm just going to give you the gist, because we'll be here for a week. Not sure how or if I should respond to the Wired article. I get that Jason, in writing it, felt conflicted about the fact that he finds me lame and boring. I'm baffled how he seems to find every single person on his trip, my friend, my family, my fans, to be worthy of this. So, yeah, the article referred basically to Sanderson being boring, his fans being boring and everything, it, it, basically. He also feels sincere in his attempts to try to understand. While he legitimately seems to dislike me and my writing, I don't think that's why he came to see me. He wasn't looking for a hit piece. I do disagree with that statement. He was looking to explore the world through his writing. In that, he and I are the same. I respect him for it, even if much of his tone seems quite dismissive of many people and ideas I care deeply about. 
The strangest part to me is how Jason says that he had trouble finding the real me. He says he wants something true or genuine, but he also has the genuine me all the time. He really did. What I said apparently wasn't anything he found useful for writing on articles. That doesn't make it genuine or true. That doesn't make it not genuine or true. I'm not offended that the true me bores him. Honestly, I'm a guy who enjoys his job, loves his family, a little obsessed with his stories, and there's no hidden trauma, no skeletons in my closet. Just a guy trying to understand the world through story. This is, in capital letters, kind of boring from an outsider's perspective. And that's true, as as I'm not near, anywhere near as good as Sanderson, but you, you try to interpolate the world, and it can be quite interesting. Another key point of the article that stung out to me, that said, let me say one thing. You, my friends, are not boring or lame. In going post to one of my favourite novels, Sir Terry Pratchett has a character fascinated by collecting pins. Not pins you might think, they aren't like Disney pins or character pins. They are... Pins like tacks used to pin things to walls. Outsiders find it difficult to understand why he loves them so much, but he does. And that's ultimately the thing here. I think if you don't understand what you're talking about, if you don't understand the people, the readers, the writer, the world, you aren't going to engage with the work. And I get the feeling that Jason, the guy that wrote the article, definitely didn't understand what he was talking about. I read through the article a few times and I found I found the article extremely dismissive and I think Sanderson points that out as well. I find articles like this not only hit more hit pieces and more clickbaity than they should be, I also find it extremely destructive and kind of sad to witness the whole thing. I mean, Jason is the senior editor of Wired.com, and I went through some of his articles. There seems to be a lack of understanding, and I don't think it's necessarily his fault, but the lack of understanding and very obvious clickbait is very apparent, and I think Sanderson handled it very well. I encourage you all to go out there and read uh, all of this and read Sanderson's work. Find the book, sit down, listen to them, read them, whichever way you want to enjoy them, and fall into that world. The worlds he creates are stunning, and you get a real sense of everything. As someone that is an aspiring author, I can say this, that... I think to be torn apart and ultimately dismissed and attacked for, very obviously attacked for your beliefs, and to handle it so well, to handle the, the reply, the Reddit post, to handle everything that happened on that level is amazing. It is genuinely sad that this seems to be, instead of talking about people and discussing them, they want to tear people down, they want to destroy them, they want to find something. And it's kind of sad. And quite personal to me on that level. Ultimately, we create, and creators want to create. But ultimately, it's you as a consumer of that product to learn to understand it or fall in love with it. And if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. But to be dismissive... To be that petty, that's just ridiculous. So, the article is trash, to paraphrase. Sanderson's reply was amazing, and I'm genuinely kind of saddened to read articles like that, because rather than discussing Sanderson's work, it's just a hit piece to tear him down. <laughs>